Hello, my sewing friends. Today, we're gonna talk about Martelli hexes, or hexagons, whatever. I call them hexes. We're going with hexes. So, I got some hexes here a while back, and I am starting a project, and first of all, I'm gonna tell you what I'm using. This is a three inch Martelli um, hexagon. I hope you can see. Um, and I haven't numbered these yet. So, and this is the two inch. And so that's two inch from here to here. And it does have the built-in seam allowances. So you can see that's point to point. So, um, but that doesn't really go with what I'm doing here today, okay? So the other thing I'm gonna share is the um, fabric line that I'm using. I have had this for a very long time. Um, and the reason why I'm sharing this is because it's super funny. Um, this is a Sweet Violet Charm Pack. It's a Moda, I believe. Yeah, Moda. And, um, anyways, I've, it was $10. I've had it for a super long time, like I said. Um, my aunt told me that she wanted a throw blanket and that, um, all of the things that I make are just too bright. So she wanted something that wouldn't be too colorful because I, I get too colorful of blankets and things. And so she wanted something calmer. So I showed her this and I showed her that I've had it for a while. And this is kind of what we've got going on here. And so it's just got lots of really beautiful prints and they're just purples and browns and greens and just lots of different cute things going on. I'll show you a better picture of that in a second. But I, um, I have to add a little bit of me in there, right? So for the background, ta-da. <laughs> so this is actually what I'm making. Is this not stinking cute? So I'm pairing it with this, what you wouldn't think would go with it at all. But this is gonna end up really making these um, little details really just pop like crazy. It's gonna really make it super cute. Like if I can get the light right, but. So it's gonna really pull out all these little details with this different colorations. So anyways, once I'm done making a bunch of these, then I will be able to put them together and make this. Now, I'm sure that you've seen um, like Missouri Quilts are like their video um, where you can buy their template and do their thing. Well, you know, that's acrylic and slippery and you know, I am I like Martelli, so. Um, so here's what I did was I took the two inch and the three inch and I cut this entire charm pack and I think I maybe divided it three times and I used my 60 inch rotary, um, 60 millimeter <laughs> inch. Um, and I just sliced that bad boy in perfect perfection. I'm also using um, a lot of um, just spare, batting we all have that box of batting that we just put our spare pieces in so i'm using this as a batting buster as well and i'm gonna just kind of do this like on the side as i'm working on other projects as well um so what i'm going to show you is how i'm doing it and I, there are videos that you can go look up and that's fine and dandy and uh, but i'm just going to show you what i did so without further ado um so one of the things that I'm really loving about this right now is I was able to, um, I cut all of, like I said, I did this whole charm pack. I'll actually pull out some of the colors so that you can kind of see. Um, just some really cute, just different, really dark and you know, neutral colors. I just love that print right there. It just looks like it was just, I don't know, it's 3D. Anyways, so it's just got some, some different variations. And do you see like the difference with that color? Like how that makes that just like be so crazy? Anyways, I wanted it to be something different. You know, I just didn't want to go with that. So this was actually just some fabric I had laying around on just some yardage of it. So, um, on to more pressing matters here. So I'm going to show you what I do. I'm sure, and I, the other thing is how important this is because cutting this stuff was took two seconds with the Martelli no slip and the cutter. I mean, literally I had this whole thing cut in no time flat. 
The other thing that's making this project super wonderful is this little gem right here. I'm gonna show you why in just two seconds. I'll make sure my iron is still going good. This is their um, 12 by 12 ironing cutting mat. So if you've ever had your wool mat, and we all have that one wool mat, and it will deform anything underneath it. So they put their no slip stuff or whatever it is that they put to make this miracle happen. So you can press, I've been using this um, all morning so far and you can't feel anything back here. This is still perfect um, cutting mat situation. So for whenever you're using the templates that are not a Martelli that, that you know, can't swivel and turn like you can a Martelli, then you have this option to be able to spin it like this, you know, which if you didn't have your table full of things like I do. But, so for this, now I have mat on mat, perfect, okay, for what I'm doing. Because here is my three inch hexagon, hexy, whatever. Um, and so I've already started and I folded one side, I folded another and folded the other. And so all I'm doing is I'm just folding about a quarter-ish inch. I did start out measuring <laughs> with my clover ironing um, measurement system, but I quickly decided that that was too much of a hassle. So now instead of moving this, because we've got lots of bias and working against things here, I don't pick that up and move it. I just rotate my ironing situation. And so then I'm just gonna fold it again, just like this. And I'm just gonna press it again. Because when you're working with all this different stuff, you just really don't want to move this fabric more than you have to, which I'm sure most of you know that, but. And I should be using my my finger, but, um, you know, I like to live dangerously, okay? <laughs> okay, so now I've got all of my sides are pressed perfectly, um, and I didn't have to move my fabric or anything, and so then I just take my piece of um, batting that I want to use, I've, I've actually got a whole stack of them cut here because I'm able to, once again, I use the Martelli two inch to just cut a whole stack of the matching batting. So then I just place it right in the center and it magically fits perfectly. Now I already have a hexi set up on my sewing machine. So we're actually gonna just switch over to that real fast. And I'm hoping that you'll be able to see from this distance. I know it's not ideal um, situation here. Let me see if I can switch up. I had to move my table around so I could watch my kids out the window because they're, you know, trying to do crazy things. So, you know, kids can't live with them and can't get rid of them, I guess. Or at least I can't. They won't move out. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm trying to adjust this. Okay, so now I'm at my machine here and I'm just using, um, let me see if I can, oh, move this big bad boy, okay. And I'm going to try to get you as close as possible. That's just the best I can do, okay? So what I've done is I've actually just started in the center of this one wall so I've just started on this strip and I've started in the center. And just for the sake of time, I just wanted to go ahead and do that. So it's gonna come down naturally like this. And so I'm just going to stitch ahead a little, which I should have not done that. I should have went ahead and folded, but get sidetracked easily. So I'm gonna go just till the fold and I'm gonna catch it in the fold and I'm gonna rotate. And then I'm just gonna lay this down. I'm gonna go a few stitches and then I'm gonna fold. I hope you can see this. And then I'm gonna just fold this up right here. And then I'm going to have this point. I'm gonna go down to this point right here. Okay. 
And then I'm going to rotate again. And then I'm going to sew a few stitches. And then I'm going to fold again. Just bringing it up to trying to make my corners right. <laughs> but I'm not too, too concerned with it. Because once you put this together, it's not going to be that big a deal. So. Okay, so now I'm pivoting again, and I'm just trying to get all the way around to the other side. Okay, and so now I'm going to fold this up, and I'm going to go to the point. I hope you can see that. One more stitch. Okay, so I'm almost to the end. I really wanted this bright green to show. I could have used um, a two and a half XE, I guess, but um, I really wanted this green to really pop on this fabric, mostly because I was kind of just being a, a pain in the butt niece, I guess, to my aunt. But I think she's gonna love it because it's just really gonna be a good color combo. So now I'm back to where I got to my half wall here. I'm gonna, let me do a couple of stitches just to make sure that this wall is going. So I'm back here. So I want all of my corners to be folded in the same direction. So I'm gonna fold this under like this, and then I'm gonna, because I left this half stitched, I'm gonna be able to fold this up without incident. So now all of my folds, you won't be able to tell where I started at all. You, you would never know. Because all of my corners and all of my folds are exactly the same. And that's it. I'm just gonna tack and then that's it. And then I will, um, on my spare time, I will use like a blanket stitch or something like that and I will um, stitch these together later on once I get more of them done. So this is just a side project that I'm working on, but I will show you. Um, they're actually just super, super cute and I'm really, really loving the way that they're coming out so far. They're just adorable. Like I love this green with this fabric. So once again, it's just something I've already got so many cut out now. So I'll just be able to keep it in a little basket on the side of my machine and I'll be able to come back to it as I want to. And I'll get this done at some point in the next, I don't know, month or two or three or four. So hope you enjoyed. Bye.